so um, it also like some people really have a hard time making friends, um, and then like bullying will like lower the self-esteem of you. But they'll start thinking like, oh, I can't make friends, or like um, some kids will bully to boost their own self-esteem. So our bench is designed to create strong friendships that will last for a while. And it's a safe place for people to go to make friends who are either lonely and they just are shy and they don't want to ask someone to be their friend. And anyone's welcome to sit down on the bench and say, hey, would you like to be my friend? And then you can hang out for the rest of the time that you're outside. And um, you can invite them to play with you too. So our goal is to create an environment where kids can feel safe to come to the school and they know that um, there's people there who are going to care for them and like if they know that if they need a friend they have a place to go and like to show people like I'm alone right now but if you want um, can I play with you like it's just like they can make new friends like if someone is seeing like if someone sees them sitting on the bench they can go over and they can say like hi my name is whatever and they can become like they can make like a lasting friendship our donors um, they donated supplies to us so we could build this bench and um, we got our paint from Robinson's. Um, Engravables made us a plaque that says that we built this bench. Uh, National Lumber donated some primer and blood, um, brushes so that we could paint it. And Lowe's donated some nuts and bolts, as well as central mass powder coating, powder coated our frame that will hold the bench together. And um, since we got all these donations, the bench is completely free, so there is no cost. Um, so do you guys have any questions? Anything you'd like? Yeah? How did you get the idea for the buddy bench? Well, we've heard of it um, in some places, like other schools have uh, some of them, and we just thought it was like a really good idea because it does help um, kids like Friendships. What was the biggest challenge you had to overcome to get this accomplished? I think getting the donations because some people would give someone one day and then we'd have to run around and try to find the other ones. <laughs> we did have a delay, so we came in a little late, so we had to try to work around that. Um, but we did, we had other things that we so while we were waiting for the wood, we, um, we worked on like our presentation and like what we were going to say. And we also got the paint donations. Did you have a template to go by to make the bench or how did that, how yeah. did you decide on the, on the specs of the bench? For our bronze award, we made a bench for the First Federated Church in Hudson. And we went by that template to make this bench. Yes. The in the materials, I think we saw it look like it's going to be colorful. Yes, it is. It's a rainbow, and it has um, writing on it. Like it will say, like "Be your friend" on it. Mm -hmm. Great. I think I'd like to compliment you on this entire project. It was a terrific idea. You've clearly uh, worked through some problems. You've come up with a really good product, and you did a nice presentation. Your PowerPoint was very informative, so you ought to be congratulated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. What we would actually like to do is, um, when there's a donation like this, you know, the Berlin School Committee. Maybe like to just go to accept the donation or acknowledge that you accept the donation. Um, so that we can have that record. Okay. 
So do we have a motion for one of the members? Um, yes, I make a motion that we accept the donation of the bench. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. No. No, you're not Berlin. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Edward, would you like to second it? Yes, I'll second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? No. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, girls. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very nice. And I have to say, I am so impressed as a former Girl Scout. <laughs> I am so impressed by your vest and all of those awards that you have received. Can you just turn around? I want to just say, look at those. That is just wow. amazing. Wow. That is a lot of dedication to being brownies and Girl Scouts and cadets. Nice work, girls. I promise I did not have that many patches. I think my mother's fingers would have fallen off. <laughs> <laughs> so, nice work. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Um, there were three people we were going to recognize tonight. Not one of them is here. <laughs> so we're going to do a virtual recognition. I do want to acknowledge um, Grace Pendergast, who was our student member this year. We did get her a t-shirt to Johnston Wales. Um, so we'll be presenting that to her maybe right before graduation, Diane suggested. Might be a good idea. We very much appreciate her help, and she was a great contributor to the committee. We also want to thank Tom Fleming. Um, Tom was on the school committee for three years, one term, um, and made, really in that time, made a significant contribution to the group. Tom was a little, he didn't always agree with us, and it's the healthiest thing possible to have people on the committee who don't always agree. He was always respectful and he was always brilliant in what he had to say. So he will be missed. And last but by no means least, um, we actually have purchased a clock that's engraved for Larry Brenner. Larry was on the school committee for many, many years. Ten plus? At least, at least nine, if not twelve years. Um, and just a tremendous leader and you know was here through many huge projects the construction of this building was a member of the building committee um, but also has been a tremendous mentor and friend and he will be very much missed and we appreciate larry's service and you've introduced the two new members so shall we move on to reorganization mm -hmm. So at this time, I'm going to ask that the Berlin School Committee identifies a new chair, a new vice chair, and a new secretary for their committee. Well, I'm wondering if Angela would be willing to be the chair. Sure. Excellent. Uh, it's as far as I got. Do you want me to be the vice chair? <laughs> volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> I nominate Cliff to be the vice chair. And I nominate Ed to be the secretary. So you all have to have motions and seconds and official votes for right. that. So the first is to nominate Angela as the chair. So we need, I believe Cliff will take yours as a motion. Yes. And then Edward, if you wouldn't mind doing a second, and then you could do an official vote. Can you second the nomination of Angela for chair, Edward? Yeah, I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> um, I nominate Cliff for vice chair. I'll second, second it. <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And I nominate Ed for secretary. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. Um, so next on your appointment for the Berlin School Committee, um, you then appoint a member. Um, Edward typically would be appointed to the Regional Committee. 
So I'd like to nominate Ed to be appointed to the Region and Union 60 School Committee. No. Except, yeah, except. It doesn't require a vote, does it? It doesn't require a vote. Actually, you're as a chair, you're just appointing. Just wave that wall. And now we need Boylston to make their nominations for chair, vice chair, and secretary. So I nominate uh, Mr. Lozaritis to continue as chair of the Boylston Elementary School Committee. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I would like to nominate Jim Spencer as the vice chair. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And would like to. Uh, for a second, I'm just trying to point out the Do have a motion to appoint um, Lori as the secretary to the Boston School Committee? My name's Lori. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> second. 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 We have a second for the documentation. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we also need to do... I would, yes, I would also like to appoint Jim Spencer to the uh, Tahantum School Committee. Okay. And then you have the region. We need a new chair, vice chair, and secretary. And for those that are new, um, typically what happens at the region level is one year it is a Berlin member that's the chair and the next year it is a Boylston member that is the chair. So um, this past year we have had Lori as the chair and Lori you've done a fabulous job and I want to thank you very much for all of your work and efforts you have done um, this past year and all of our chairs actually have just done a, a fabulous job this past year. It's been a great year. Um, but now's the time where we have to think of um, the new chair, vice chair, and secretary for the region. I'd like to nominate Cliff as chair of the region. Second. <laughs> it's a deafening <laughs> sign. <silence. laughs> yeah, the nominations I take. So there you go. Oh, I'm supposed to say. All you second, in, right? All I in second. Favor. So all in favor? Aye. 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 It's a bumpy ride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can see how complex this is. It's <laughs> <laughs> looking like which role. I'm it's the simple do. things that get complicated. It yeah. is. It is. Oh you would think we had. We need cue cards. <laughs> Somebody have it down. Like, no. Uh, yeah, applause. <laughs> I need a nomination for a vice chair. Chair. It's easy for me to say. Um, I nominate Matt as vice chair. You do. <laughs> second. Wow, man. Nominated no, and seconded. Now, I'll, uh, any for the discussion? Lori did what is not. Lori seconded it. I seconded it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations, Matt. Thanks. Look forward to working with you. <laughs> and now we need a secretary. Yes, we do. <laughs> I'm secretary for the elementary. You're so skilled. Oh. <laughs> well, what are the work well, duties? Of, what are the duties? So what, what are the duties of secretary? What are the duties of secretary? Yeah. Yeah. Mostly, it's signing, signing, signing proof, the minutes. Right? I'll do it. Sign. Yeah. There you go. Sure. Sure. He, he actually made eye contact. Right. That's what I'm asking. Hey, we already got him started signing last week, so we're good. So is that? You get my attention when I'm who nominated Jim? Did you know? Yes, I know. And you seconded it. Is there any further discussion? Okay, it's all in favor party. say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. So, with that said, I do have documents that will be going around. So, the new chairs and new secretaries, it is labeled here on the sign here forms. Who needs to sign? So, if it says all secretaries, your secretary for a particular school committee, I need you to sign on that line that you represent. So for those who wanted just to uh, recall, Edward, you are the secretary for Berlin. Yes. And we have Lori, you are the secretary for Boylston. Yes. And Jim, you are the secretary for the region. Okay, so we need to sign these 
Um, and there are some for chairs as well that you'll need to sign. So I'll just start passing them around. If you can pass them back this way, and I'll give them to the last two as we go through. Okay. So see, first page is done. So almost. Oh, no. We have to almost. appoint the treasurer. Right. Does the chair appoint the treasurer? Yeah. yeah. Well, then I would like to um, appoint Joe. You have to tell me how to pronounce it. Michael Beck. Michael Beck uh, to be the Burl and Boylston School Committee treasurer. And that's done then, right? It's an appointment. Um, we have to appoint the assistant treasurer. In the past, Matt, you have been the assistant treasurer to the school committee. I think you're right. Would you, would you want to continue in that august role? Sure. Yes. Okay. All right. Then, Matt, you shall be appointed. You shall be appointed. So um, now, Matt, for the subcommittee assignments, there's an appointment for the Boylston School Committee member and an alternate to approve the payroll. I did announce that the um, the current members on that um, are Matt, is Matt, and then the alternate is Lori. So those don't have to change year to year unless somebody feels as if they would have difficulty getting into the school and you might need to get somebody else to come in. That's up to you as, as members. I am going to ask a question on that relative to you went through a process of a single signature approval. Mm -hmm. Right. Correct. So it's yeah. right. So it's you, and if you can't, then the alternate currently is Lori. Okay. So we don't have the three member signatures. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So right. We'll specific. So we, the, um, I get some clarification on that because the, the, uh, the, the they're a little bit ambiguous about having an alternate, and uh, sometimes went forward with that, and some towns did not. Um, and the town accountants got guidance from the state that um, they would permit an alternate design. So, uh, if you were based, they would not. Uh, so, so then you'd have to get the two members of the primary person could not sign. Interesting. So, it's a little bit against the spirit of the Municipal Modernization Act, but it kind of creates a little bit of a it's better than the previous process, but it's not quite what we would hope. So in the session, would either of you have the opportunity to be available to, was it every two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. to, to get up yeah. to sign payroll warrants? I'm fairly available. Okay. I work from home a lot, so. Okay. So my schedule's gotten a little hairy. So um, I would like to appoint Jim Spencer as the payroll being a number to, to sign for payroll warrants. Mm -hmm. And the alternate, I will accept, appoint myself as the alternate, albeit don't know if we have to do it for the work anyways. Right, so we can't, we can't, if, <coughs> yeah. if, 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 if it's Technically, Lori and I are the alternates because right. by the code, we have to pull sign. The other um, subcommittee is, okay. So and just for a minute, you'll get a note generally from Cheryl She's already texted me. That's what I had to do last week. Yeah, yeah. 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 And she's flexible about making sure she's available to get you. She's going to need it in order to execute the sign. So. Oh, see, that's good. For the record, could I ask that you also approve the payables warrants, not just the payroll warrant? It is. It's the payroll, payable and payroll. Oh, payable. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. It's the same. Um, can I ask a question? Yeah. There's no similar sign on the payroll. Right. And the reason? We just didn't think that it was going to change it. So okay. We knew what okay. there was a potential need to change because of Matt's schedule. Just yeah, curious. that's why we didn't do it. Okay. Yep. Um, also, um, for the appointment of the personnel subcommittee, um, currently the members are Matt and Lori. I just want to keep in mind that we will be going into negotiations this upcoming school year for the Boylston Teachers Association. So. If you um, want to appoint now, if you want to stay the same, that's entirely up to you as a committee. Um, we typically have two members um, on the personnel subcommittee for those negotiations. They might not start until January, because that's typically when it starts, but at some point during that school year, at least in the fall, we get notification that they're interested in beginning negotiations. That's just for boys. Um, so I'll ask the two of you of your interest. I, I know that that is a 
comical phrase, <laughs> deep interest and desire. Um, would you both be interested in participating in the negotiation this year? I, do you feel your schedule would permit and allow uh, for? I would be willing to do that. So okay. I can ask to about both. Okay. Chairman and uh, Lori. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. I think Jim's list is full. His list is full. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. So will Lori be and Jim an alternate or no? It's two, two members, members, two subcommittee oh. members, and it's it's Jim and Lori. Yep. Okay. So for the region, um, we need to appoint a subcommittee for payroll and payable warrants. The current members are myself, Matt, and Angela, and we need three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anyone who's on that list who does not want to be on this list? I don't do it. No? I'll stay on this. Okay. Then I shall point Matt and Joe. Are those warrants out of the same time as the time? Right? They are, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yep. I mean, would you want to go? It doesn't make sense. Jim. You want Jim? I'm going up there anyway. He's going to go there to sign him anyway, so. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay, Jim. Sign me up. Jim and Joe are in me. It's not long. I promise. Not really. That's what he says. Okay, um, did you get that? Yes. Okay. Um, you have to appoint uh, a region policy subcommittee. The current members are Tom Fleming and Larry Brenner. Of course, neither of them will be able to be on that committee. So we need two um, regional school committee members to be appointed, one from each town. Do we have anybody who would like to volunteer? Um, can I? Edward, would you be in, would you be interested, Edward, in being on the region policy subcommittee? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. That's the problem. Boylston. I'm going to ask this question, just how often is the committee together? What is so the it, it varies um, each year. It depends on how frequent and how significantly um, the policies are changing. We did a lot of policy changes this past year. So this upcoming year, I don't see too many. However, there are some that we do have to review and revise before um, September, so that we at least have them in place. Um, so I'm thinking like it, somewhere at the end of June or middle of the end of June, we will be scheduling a policy subcommittee meeting so that we can get those done before the end of the school year. Typically what happens um, for our new members, the policy subcommittee will look at the policy, review the language together, we'll meet. The policy subcommittees will um, make a determination and a recommendation to bring to the full committee. If it's a new policy, it comes forward to the committee as a first read. And then at the next meeting, it gets voted. If it's a policy that we've already had in place and there were revisions, we just put it in as a consent agenda, typically, and just <coughs> we expect that the school committee members are going to read that prior to the meeting um, and ready for approval. So um, I'm thinking we'll probably have one meeting at some point in June. Uh, we have a couple of things that we need to um, get together, especially with our special education some of the laws and so forth that have come up, some of the policies we need to get going, um, and rates. I know we're looking at the rates here at Tahanto, uh, rental rates, so some of those things we'll be revisiting in June. But other than that, probably, probably uh, we have one policy that we probably met three times on, that one particular policy, and then others, like we, we have seven policies, we might be able to just go right through seven policies like that in one meeting. Um, so it really, yeah, really, we didn't really meet that much. We right? went through a lot of policies in one meeting. Is this particular subcommittee meeting one that gets <coughs> scheduled based on availability of the two of the two people? So it's right, or is it something that you know? Yeah. So what happens so it's is, usually, is you we usually will look at my schedule. We'll pick some dates and times on the schedule. There have been, not necessarily the policy subcommittee, but other subcommittees who might meet during the day and not have an evening meeting. Um, some of them we meet at night. It really depends on what the subcommittee's availability is. 
my personal interest would be more in line with item C. And this, you know, maybe not to say this is really one of the big things I have to be to be But if I was to select myself or point or mm -hmm. I don't, policy. I don't mind doing policy stuff. Point you. He's well, I, to be honest, most of the stuff you pointed me to is just signing things so far. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Edward and Jim will be appointed to the Region Pol Policy Subcommittee. Thank you, gentlemen. And now we need to appoint a member to the building committee to replace Larry Brenner. And Matt, you just indicated interest. Sure. Is there anyone who wants to argue with Matt about that? Okay, Matt, consider yourself appointed. Great. And we need to appoint Bob. Yes. Yes. And do I just do that by the way of magic you wand? Just, yep, you can just appoint Bob, and, and what it is is Julie Supernam was the last uh, director of finance that was actually a voting member on the building committee. Bob has been there, and he's actually been in action there, but he's not a voting member, so it doesn't count as a quorum um, without Great. Bob there. Awesome. So. Well, I would be glad to appoint you to that. <laughs> glad to have a vote. All right. <laughs> And so the payroll and payable warrants are going around. Now, now, um, now we go to Berlin. Right, Jim and um, Ed, this gets a little bit crazy because we have consent agendas and all three school committees have to individually vote the consent agenda that goes around. On this particular um, section, I would just ask that both of you just listen for tonight's being because you weren't members of the previous um, minutes, so it wouldn't make sense for you to vote to approve because you weren't in attendance. So I'll just ask that you just abstain from, from the vote on, for this evening. So for Berlin, I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make that motion to approve. Okay, I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And all those who abstain? You know, abstain. Oh, abstain. Sorry, abstain. Well, no, you don't abstain. There's too many instructions. Everybody wants to be in the world. It took me like four meetings. <laughs> 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 You are abstaining. Jim is not abstaining. Oh, okay. just, <laughs> Until we, we just did it right. And so we're just laughing. 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 We're just and for the Berlin Boylston Regional and Union 60 School Committee, do I have a motion? So moved. I second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And two abstentions. Two abstentions. Two abstentions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is exhausting. <laughs> So communication is the next item on our agenda. It appears we have no communication. No, no, no. Okay. I keep forgetting I'm in charge here. I keep waiting for Lori. <laughs> she will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, under the reports section. Wait, um, wait you have petitions? Oh, sorry. I skipped over a piece. Do we have any petitions or audiences related to items on the agenda? <laughs> okay, seeing none, we will move on to the reports. Um, is someone reporting any Grace's absence? Now, uh, quite a bit of the um, information that she probably would have spoken about will be in my in report. Excellent, thank you. Do we have a report for, ah, there you are. Okay. I'm Jessica Nelson, we're going to proceed back. And we're moving pretty rapidly 
targeted towards all of our end of year events right now. Uh, tomorrow night we actually have a meeting that Molly Langevier from BMS is going to be presenting at. She'll be talking about the anatomy and development of the hearing process. And we're all really looking forward. She's a great presenter. Um, so we'd invite anyone who wants to attend to that. And she's graciously already agreed to give another presentation next year on a different topic. So we're thrilled. And tomorrow night we also are picking our scholarship winner. Uh, CPAC doesn't do a lot of fundraising, but the bulk of what money we do fundraise for goes every year into a scholarship to graduating senior. And, um, excuse me, uh, the rest goes to things like National Inclusive Schools Week. And segueing into the scholarship and fundraising, we're in the middle of a fundraiser, and we all hate fundraising, so you know, anyone who needs sheets, we have one week left on our fundraiser. <laughs> They're great well, sheets. <laughs> um, it's to replenish the scholarship fund for next year. <laughs> so we have information on our website and also on our Facebook page about that. And it's till May 31st. Um, our board members, Angela Allred and Carrie LaValley, have been promoting CPAC and discussing what we've been up to on the Royal City Cable Access Channel. And we're all thrilled that they stepped up to do that. And we're grateful that uh, the Cable Access Channel invited us. <clears throat> it's been part of the experience. And the last, oh, there's a few more, sorry. Uh, we're hoping to organize another Meet the Experts Night for September 20th in the fall. The teachers were fantastic last year coming and participating, and it was a wonderful opportunity that we wish more families had taken advantage of. So we're hoping to have a bit more lead time to promote it uh -huh. because they really offer a lot of information and a lot of their time to anyone who had questions about what they do. And let's see, in April, we had a joint presentation and meeting with the West Boylston CPAC to talk about effective communication in the IEP. And then the last thing I have to tell you is, normally you'd be getting the list of excellent educator awards, but we haven't given them to the BMS and Tahanto teachers yet. That'll be at their June 5th. Uh, staff meetings. So after that, uh, we'll provide the list. But we're very happy that there were nominees for all schools this year. Mm -hmm. and, and we're thrilled to be able to get these. Thank you, Jessica. You <laughs> Where's your meeting tomorrow night? Is it in this room? It's at BMS. Oh, BMS. It'll be in um, Joe Walton's classroom okay. so that we can use the um, the audio system whose name I cannot recall. Sound field. Sound field. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Jessica. Thanks, Jessica. All right, Berlin Link. Hi. Um, so Suzanne wasn't feeling well today, um, so she knew that I was actually already coming because I had a little something I was going to say to Tom. I thought Tom was going to be here tonight. And we just as parents really wanted to thank him for all the years of service that he gave to the students in Berlin. Uh, he did a great job. We just really appreciate it. Uh, so Suzanne did send me some information she wanted me to share. Um, she wanted me to talk about um, the field trips. Basically, um, Link fields all the transportation for field trips for every grade at Burlow Memorial, except for the fifth grade. Um, the Burlow Police and the D.A.R.E. program takes care of that one. Um, we funded a nature's classroom um, with the Hands on Nature's program for Mrs. Woodward's class. Uh, they're going to fund a giant slide activity for field day. We had, um, on May 31st, we have the Global Earth Coming, which is um, another event that was tied in with the Sky Dome Planetarium that we also had um, in the gym. That was, um, the kids really seemed to enjoy that. Uh, on June 14th, Fidelity is coming in for a STEM event. Um, the kids are going to be broken into groups according to their grades. And um, they're going to do activities like Little Bits, Spiros, Ollies, uh, Golden Blocks, Kanos. I'm not sure if I said that one right. Um, and they're also going to make use of the Makerspace and do the Squishy Circuits, um, Osmos, the Makey Makey uh, in the deconstruction area. Um, we had uh, the May 4th um, elementary STEM night was here, and we did the snacks and the refreshments. Um, we also had a family dance on May 12th, with, which had a huge turnout. It gets bigger and bigger every year. People want to dance. 
No, that's a that's a great list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, it's really program. amazing. Yeah. Thank you for all the work. Yeah, I will say that Val actually was one of the um, people here on STEM night on May fourth, helping with all the little uh, makey makeys and, and getting the kids going. So she actually had the display from from there. So thank you. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was yeah. a great great turnout. Thanks for all of your efforts yeah, too. Um, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. We have a Boylston PTO representative this evening. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. Does anyone want to report in absentia? <laughs> I can just say, you know, the, the most recent thing, what's going on right now is um, we have race for education planned for Thursday. We're monitoring the weather very closely. Traditionally, we've held it outside on the fields. Um, so we're watching it, but we do have alternate plans. And I know that the PTO just shared it out via social media and um, plot prints today that um, in the event that it does rain, we will still hold, host it. We'll just do it in, indoors. Mm. It'll be fun. It's, we got plans. Great. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. I already have a child planning there. They're using Dress the support. Berlin weather bug to watch the weather. Closely. I'm sure that they are. <laughs> the most accurate forecast. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Do we have a representative from the Tahanto PTO who wants to? Yes. I was hoping Sandra was going to be here so mm -hmm. I wouldn't get tossed into the fire here. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. Go there? <laughs> yeah. Stacy, I mean, it seemed like the fire. <laughs> it's the um, camera. <laughs> my name's Stacy O'Neill, um, and I have uh, two sixth graders and uh, a returning student from Aspect. She'll be a sophomore. So I'm stepping into Sandra's seat um, and uh, a few other uh, parents have joined the committee as well and uh, I'm sure you'll be meeting them. Um, I guess I can tell you we've been busy with uh, staff appreciation, uh, also the high school ice cream social and we're working on uh, middle school field day right now which is scheduled for June 19th and uh, last week we uh, went over all the applications for the scholarships and we awarded four and it worked out great, two for Boylston and two for Berlin. So we'll be handing those out at graduation. And I think that's about it. Great. So let me know, uh, or I can of course talk with Sandra about if there's a standard kind of um, report that you expect from PTO or are you just looking for general uh, information or things that we've been working on. Okay. Thank you very much, Stacey. Thank you, Thanks for Stacey. stepping up. And Stacey, that is typically what we do, is any of the upcoming events or anything that's happened okay. that you want to share that you haven't shared. Yeah, Great. That's a typical format. Thank you. Okay, you bet. Yay, hey, Superintendent Dexter. Oops. Sorry, Lori. No, I just wondered if I could just make an observation, because Stacy brought up something that um, I wanted to comment on. It sounds like you have, you said you had a student returning from Asabet yes. coming back to Tohunto. Yeah, I have. We have five children, young and adult teenagers that we're aware of, who are coming back to Tohunto mm -hmm. from St. John's, mm -hmm. from Asabet, and from other private schools. Mm -hmm. so, so I think that's a testament to the work that Tahanto is doing. Absolutely. And that the grass isn't always greener. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Correct. My report. So I'll start first with the, um, the town meeting update. Both of our towns passed all of our proposed budgets for FY18. So we are actually um, very pleased to continuously observe the support from both of our communities um, regarding our budgets. And we are also grateful for their willingness to work with us throughout this um, the challenging times we start typically for those who don't realize we actually start in October for the following August budget so um, it's a long process and I really appreciate that they have really heard where our budgetary concerns are um, the finance committees in both towns the selectmen in both towns we worked a lot with them and it's it's been great to see the success at the end um, and it's a big the day after that we all can say it all passed. So we appreciate that very much to everybody. Also, um, our anticipated last day of school this year is um, June 23rd. We had a little 
challenging times on some of our snow day calls this year. Um, and I also want to appreciate, um, send my appreciation to all of the um, unions, actually, because during one potential snow day, I was texting with them and we were finding solutions because one snow day was actually a half day and it was a half day PD. And I said, I can't do a, a two hour delay and then their half day. So we really kind of talked it through, the unions and I, all that whole snow day was, we were trying to strategize how we could make it work because we definitely didn't want to try to, if we had that snow day, we'd be talking about Monday as the last day and that's not the case. So I really appreciate everybody's efforts this year and, and collaboration with that. So um, it is a Friday and I do want to point out that although the last day is on a Friday, attendance does count on that last day and it's important that we have our students in that building um, in their um, respective classes and, and there's a lot of excitement on that last day but it's also very important that we see, see them here. Um, also, what we do have is um, our graduation Sunday, June 4th, and I know Diane did pass out invitations to all of you, so please let the office secretaries know if you will be able to attend. You do have a special, uh, um, an assigned a reserved seat at graduation, so we like to make sure that we're reserving the right amount of seats for everybody. Um, but, uh, and the school committee chairperson hands the diplomas to our graduates at the, at the ceremony, so it's nice to have you all there. Updates on public education. I stated that I'd like to, no pressure, but, you know. <laughs> no, no it's actually fun. Is the last day a full or half for the record? Half, half day. day. Okay. Um, so the updates on public education, I started doing this a couple months ago on a couple of different things, and you know, where to begin, I can go extremely wide as federal, I can keep it as, as state and local. So I tried to keep it a little bit, um, you know, more on the budgetary idea. The Senate is actually hoping to pass its fiscal budget. Um, they met this morning, they were supposed to start at 10.30 this morning on some of their final numbers. We're hoping to get by the end of the week this week. Um, but there has been another topic is, um, you've heard a lot about water in the school systems and safe water in schools. I would just like to say that they actually um, are trying to get more strict legislation in the state of Massachusetts on that topic of water, but we actually proudly want to state that we do have our water tested regularly um, in our schools. Um, well within the regulations uh, and the requirements of the state. So um, DESE has also released some revised ELA and math standards of which we have recently been um, notifying the teachers and working with the teachers on, um, on that so they can continuously revise anything that they need to do um, for that. Social studies framework. As you know, I have been a part of the Massachusetts Department of Education Civics Task Force we just gave our presentation to the commissioner. Um, there were two practitioners, myself and Alan from Brian, uh, Brandeis University. The two of us spoke with the Department of Education representatives to the commissioner about our findings and the hope is that they will have a draft of the social studies framework um, by February of next year of 18 to the Department of Education for public um, review and for public comments. So this year they did, the, it's the same um, similar protocol that they did this year for ELA and math. They get it approved from the Department of Ed as a draft. They had it on the website and they waited for public participation. We kept sending it to our staff as well pretty regularly and asking um, public um, participation on uh, feedback. They'll do the same here with the Department of Ed's um, social studies framework as well. And um, the hope is that they'll get the, the public participation feedback and we'll be able to implement it in the fall of 2018 um, is what we're hoping to, to see to start with those revisions. That's their timeline. I also, um, the Attorney General's Office, you should have had in your packet, the Attorney General's Office gave districts updated guidance on um, health care providers and for public schools in regards to immigration. I can state that we currently do not have any immigrants in our schools, um, that, this, that this would actually, um, we would have to actually refer to, um, but we do have it on record and on file should we need to um, make any changes or provisions or anything like that, we have their guidance from Attorney General. So that's it for my, my reports. Any questions from committee members? 
Okay. Mr. Campbell, you're next up. Good evening, everybody. Thanks. Uh, we'll just take a couple of minutes of your time. I know we got a lengthy like agenda. Uh, busy time of year in school, as everybody will probably say tonight. We have finished fabulous MCAS testing for the year. Um, I am pleased to report, you know, you can't really look at what they're writing or what the questions are. There's all kinds of rules. And, um, I will tell you, however, that I saw a lot of purposefulness in our youngsters taking their little standardized test this year, and it was uh, good to see the focus. I have no idea how it will all turn out. I always have very positive feelings. Um, we'll see what happens, but good signs. I was proud of the kids. They were, I had a talk with all of them as we uh, started the process. I said, your best, job, your best effort, that's all we're asking. The score doesn't matter. What you do is do your best. They seem to take that to heart. Um, we're all looking forward to the Connects program, but I'm going to defer to my colleague in crime to talk a little bit about that because it's a parent in his town that kind of brought that forward. Um, I will point out that this Thursday, please, please come, is the annual Notathon and Art Show at school. Doors open at 6. The Notathon starts at 7. It's a big fundraiser for our link parent group, so you are all more than welcome to attend that. And uh, for those of you who do not attend the Memorial Day program at school on Memorial Day, we have our Memorial Day program Tuesday, May 30th at 9.30. That's what I got. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Mr. Thompson. Okay. John left me with things to say. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little worried that I wasn't going to have enough. Um, similarly, we have wrapped up MCAS 2.0, and I just want to ditto uh, Mr. Campbell's remarks. Our, our kids worked really, really hard. We, we tried to send them a similar effort about, or similar message about effort, and I can tell you that they worked really hard. I have several kids that it's, a, it's an untimed test, so they can take as long as they want, and we had some kids that took an awful long time. It wasn't because it was difficult. For them, it was because they were really conscientious about about what their product looked like. So um, I'm anxiously awaiting the results from it because I feel like there's a, there's a lot of good things to share based on that. Uh, since our last meeting, one of the other things that uh, we've done as a school is focusing on our wellness policy. We created a screens-free week. Uh, it was actually brought by a, a community member, the, the idea. We did work with Karen Barber over at the rec department. and. Tara Koziak and Brianna Pasquale, two of our teachers, really spearheaded the effort. We tried to provide kids with different activities to do over the course of the week and um, to, to stay off the screens for entertainment purposes. We all use screens for work, to learn, but you know, can we limit it in, in some ways? Uh, so we challenged the kids to, to go home and find other things to do. Overall, we came back with 107 kids that met the challenge for all five days. Um, roughly 40%, far more than I expected. It was Boston Celtics playoff week, so um, I was, it was a big success. We look forward to, to doing it in the future. I couldn't watch the games, because you knew the kids were gonna ask me the next day. And parents would drive by and say, you missed a heck of a game. <laughs> Who would do that? I don't know. Who would do such a thing? <laughs> no way. <laughs> um, the other thing is, thank you, uh, John, for, for allowing me to talk about it. We have a really fun opportunity, um, thanks to Mike Real in Thermo Fisher Scientific. He works for a company that promotes, um, well, they own Connects. So what they've done is they've challenged our fifth graders to come up with a solution to a problem. How do you pick up garbage from the bottom of the ocean using Connects? Uh, simulated ocean, they're going to come off of the table and we have groups of three and four students working together to solve that problem and build something. Um, they have to build and create blueprints, they have to be able to deconstruct it and reconstruct it the day of the event and we will be, uh, be hosting an event over in Boylston with Berlin in attendance where we'll, all the kids will have an opportunity to present their their creations and their solutions to the problems. It's really exciting, and uh, the kids are already having a blast with it. So. And Mr. Thompson's making us all lunch. <laughs> By himself. Don't put that on the nose. <laughs> 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 you didn't get that, right? <laughs> um, finally, kindergarten registration. We are up to 32 students, and there's rumblings that there might be three more out there, but I'm waiting to, to get that paperwork in before I, I report on that. 
Uh, similarly, uh, everyone's invited to our Memorial Day program. It's May 26th it's two, at 2 o'clock. So any veterans out there too, please let the, let the school know. We'd love to, love to have you there and we'd love to recognize you for your service. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Diane. May is the month of many tests, assessments. Um, we have finished up our AP testing, um, as well as our MCAS paper-based testing, uh, which includes um, the eighth grade in science, technology, and engineering, and the 10th grade um, math assessment is still paper-based. Um, tomorrow we finish up all MCAS computer-based in grades six, seven, and eight as well. So there were a couple days during the month of May where we had AP testing, MCAS paper-based, and MCAS computer-based all on the same day. So it was quite a um, scene here. That's a lot of uh, quiet, very quiet. Um, we will have our end of the year DDMs, um, as well as uh, teachers will um, give students end of year surveys, uh, as well as our final exams uh, for grades um, nine through twelve. The seniors started their final exams today, their last day of classes was yesterday. Um, I do have to say, and I'd, li I'd like to give. Thanks to the senior class um, because of their attendance over this this past week. Um, not only with uh, yesterday being the last day of school, but also with the um, state senior skip day um, being announced, um, we did not have any senior students unaccounted for. So. And I want to thank you for not skipping, Diane. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> if they had, I would have. Had to have gone with them to chaperone them <laughs> <laughs> to call it an official day off but we were all here um, next week really um, brings in our probably our bus busiest week of the school year with our senior week um, we begin on Tuesday with uh, our se annual senior breakfast, our graduation practice, baccalaureate, uh, which occurs at St. Mary's of the Hills uh, on Tuesday evening at seven o'clock. Wednesday is the senior class trip to the Brownstone Adventure Park in Connecticut. Thursday is our athletic awards assembly from six to nine. Friday is our senior parent dinner at the Manor um, in West Boylston at 7 p.m. And then our culminating event is graduation on Sunday, June 4th at 2 p.m. in the gymnasium. Um, NIASC, our NIASC update, I am pleased to announce that we received our letter. Uh, we will be re-accredited. Um, so I'd like to uh, thank and con congratulate all the students, the faculty, the staff, central office um, and the community as a whole. Uh, our letter was shared with, with the school committee. Our final report um, has not been released yet, uh, um, however, but um, I am pleased to report that we have, um, probably since, since I um, have been here over the past 20 some odd years, um, <laughs> we probably received uh, the most uh, commendations that we have ever received. So um, we have some areas uh, that they would like to see us report on, um, but um, nothing near any of the previous, you know, two reports over the past 20 some odd years, uh, nowhere near the need of um, recommendations that we have had in the past. So. Um, I'd like to applaud the whole Tahanto community for that mm -hmm. as well. I'm going to update on some things that, um, if Grace were here, I'm sure she would update on. Um, so the first one is last Thursday, the student council, high school student council, in conjunction with administration, um, we did a, uh, a afternoon in which we um, named it code phrase when stags fly. Um, what we had done is um, at, we had a fire drill um, and the staff was instructed to bring all of, the, all of the high school students into the auditorium after the fire drill. 
um, and student council had planned um, sort of an impromptu field day for all of the high school kids because it's been, you know, there's been a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety. Um, you know, we're coming into finals and seniors last, last day. Um, so we had great weather. Um, and they organized, the kids could play can jam, they could play, you know, frisbee, football, water balloons. Um, the PTO, we, we timed it so that their, their ice cream social was that day as well. Um, or the kids could just hang out and relax and socialize with their friends that, um, that afternoon. So that was Thursday. So um, I think it was... Uh, a very well received. Um, I got probably the biggest um, applause when I announced that classes were canceled for the remainder of the day. Um, so that was that was nice. Um, as well as the um, athletic update, um, our baseball team um, clinched the league championship. Um, they still remain undefeated this week. However, they have four games this week due to makeups because of rain last week. Um, so both baseball and softball have um, four games this week as well. Uh, track, I'm pleased to announce that Carly Smith qualified for uh, the state track meet in the pentathlon. Um, and then last Friday, finally, we had our prom. Approximately 150 students attended the prom at um, Fruitlands Museum in Harvard. And it was a gorgeous night, absolutely beautiful prom, probably one of the best proms that I've been to out of many proms. It was, you know, it was just, it was beautiful. The kids were well behaved um, as usual. And we had a, we had a fabulous evening. So. Great, what a nice setting. Oh, it was, it was they, everybody watched the sunset. It was absolutely beautiful. Yeah. You could see them all out there with their cameras taking pictures of the sunset. It was just, it was gorgeous. It was gorgeous backdrop. What a beautiful yeah. place. And, and they did the catering. It was catered by a, um, a different company. Yeah, it was, it was just, everything was Great. beautiful. Well, thank you, Diane. Mm -hmm. Not only for your report, but for your leadership. Thank you. Thank you. So we need to approve a student teacher who will be working mentored by Mrs. Ms. Broadhampel. So do I have a motion to approve a student teacher? I'll make the motion to approve the student teacher. Do I have a second? I'll second. Any questions or comments? So it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. She's there September to December, correct? Right? Yes. Okay. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Um, next, we have uh, we need to approve the Reed Tyler Scholarship recipients. Cliff and Tom served on a subcommittee with Maureen Norbold and Carol Young. And I'm do this. I guess motion to. I guess I would like a motion to approve the recommended scholarships for the Moses Reed Tyler. I'll make that motion. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any questions or comments? It, if it's helpful to the committee, um, I inherited this from Tom, who um, really did a terrific job with it for all the time he was in charge of it. Um, and he gave me terrific guidance. Um, it was a very uh, simple process. Uh, it was very efficient, as you would expect Tom to organize. And uh, the committee discussed um, how to disseminate the funds, and agreed on the process they used in the past of a three-tier system. And so we used the same approach this year. 
No, I think it's a great, um, it's just great to see that $15,800 is being disseminated for scholarships for our seniors this year. And I think that's just, that's commendable for our small, you know, um, this, I've seen this for, since I've been here for the last five years. And to just see each year how much money we're able to give to our Berlin students is just, I just think it's great. I, I need to correct you, they're not all seniors. Oh, that's true. Um, most of them, the majority of them, are already in that's college. Right. That's right. Uh, they may be freshmen, sophomores, juniors, um, or uh, post uh, graduate work. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's a variety. It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. So, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 There's one piece um, in that as a chair, you could just get approval from the um, rest of the committee to add to the agenda, which is the approval of the um, Dosh Williams, should be on your updated agenda um, for the attorney funding the Moses Retirement Trust. Um, yes. Do you mean, um, you mean Does she chair? need a motion? Do we? Do Right. So every year, also with the Roads to Meet, it's handled by a trust fund. And every year they send the school committee a annual report and sort of like a, it's an annual report and we just need to vote to approve um, that probate account for the trust with Moses Reed Tyler. Right, just to clarify, it was in Dosh Williams, that was our former attorney. Um, this is with uh, Bowditch and Dewey. I will make the motion that we approve for the Bowditch and Dewey, what is it, annual report to retirement trust? It's an annual probate account. Annual probate, yeah, whatever that, what she just said. <laughs> Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Is I'll second it. Oh, you're going to second it. Yeah. Any questions about this? Okay. Are all those in favor say aye? Aye. Um, we have a student handbook. It's just a first read. I just had a question about that. Were there any highlighted changes or anything in the handbook it's that I missed? More updates based on policy changes. It's kind of a lawyer-driven document. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for John on the first read of the handbook? No. no. The only thing I just wanted to say, Angela, on all three handbooks, um, this year we are going through our coordinated program review um, through special education. So these handbooks have been reviewed with a fine tooth comb to make sure all of our policies are updated. Anything that's formatted that might have been off format has been all changed, corrected, and, and fixed. I think everybody is probably at this point sick of looking at these and could probably read them, just read them to you, like, because I think everybody's really taken a lot of effort in all the schools this year and all of them, more so I think even in our previous years. I mean, we've done it in the previous years, but this year it was really, we're gonna make sure we're submitting these all to the Department of Ed, that we have everything exactly the way they need to be. So, you will very I would like to make an observation, because when I, Trust me, I didn't read every word. As I skimmed through them, you know, having seen school handbooks many times, I was very, I was struck by the professionalism and thoroughness of each of the presentations, um, each of the handbooks. I thought that was really terrific. And there's just one correction about the Berlin handbook. My name was misspelled. Oh, oh, that's Cheryl. Oh. <laughs> Consider it correct. <laughs> but you won't know what to correct. Laporte's two words, the P, P is capitalized. And that is, you're not the first person who's made that mistake. We'll vote on that next time. We already voted. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. So following. Here. We have a first read on our um, handbook. Any, 
initial comments, thoughts? I didn't check the spelling of my name. L-A-U-R-I-E. <laughs> L-A-U-R-I-E. No. That's wrong. So there is a spelling. It is actually her first name is L-O. Oh, is it really wrong? <laughs> You're always copying. <laughs> they got loads of writers right, though. <laughs> Go figure. It's empowering. Yeah. You have to add Jim to the. Yeah, Jim to it, and then me as the chair. But that's uh, other than that, uh, same thing. My comments sort of echoed there. Is I didn't read all the words of it. I know it's a very thorough. Uh, are there specific call-outs or highlights that we should? Focus some attention towards. Not off the top of my head. Uh, you know, it was a lot of you know really fine tuned. Yeah, no, yeah. No. Look. that's all. And it's just a first rate, so there's no vote. Just looking for comments. Thank you. Thank you. Back to the regents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And page three. Yeah. Well, we have page to. Page three. Yeah. So it's um, we're looking at an out of state. Field trip, is that correct? Yep. And I have the correct spot on the agenda, you which are. is four pages long. Did I say that? So this is an educational field trip application to go to Bristol Park. <clears throat> Do I have a motion? Questions? Or how about a motion? So, so moved. Second. Right, motion. Sir. Add second. 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 Yes. Actually, add second. Okay, second. Is there any discussion about that? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Right. Okay. Um, like yeah, I would really appreciate you talking about this. So, we have a request um, from one of our students from our sister school in Shanghai to attend here in the fall. Um, in order for this individual to attend, um, currently he is in seventh grade, and he has, um, Diane and I have seen his transcripts. We've had the transcripts sent over here. Um, he is a high performer in the seventh grade. We did not open any um, school choice openings for next year's eighth grade or seventh grade for next year. And in review and having discussion, Diane and I are comfortable to propose that we allow him to come into our ninth grade class for next year school. If he does come in, we are, um, there would be a condition that he is um, going to stay for one year and that he would have the visa that actually specifically states that he's allowed to attend public school for one year. So it's not considered necessarily an exchange student, um, it's a tuition in student and the school committee has a right and authorization to um, put together a tuition fee for this individual student. That fee would then go into a revolving um, account and it would actually help to offset our students who would like to uh, go to other um, you know, we have, we have accounts and, and um, student accounts that actually can help to support students that maybe if there's a field trip or there's different things, different events that happen or travel events or whatever, and the families can't afford, we always have some type of a sliding scale or something that we can help to offset, and so this will actually help to do that. Um, so our per pupil expenditure is just under $15,000. And my recommendation to the school committee would be to allow the student to come in, tuition in, and for a cost of a $15,000 tuition cost. Um, we have a family member also from um, Shanghai in which this student would be uh, living with um, for the year, and that was a, a personal arrangement, not something that's arranged through the school. Um, Diane, did I miss anything on that? at all. Don't mean to put you on the spot, but you and I had that meeting. Yeah, I don't believe so. I think I pretty much spot on. Mm -hmm. um, we did talk to Russ Dupre um, about how we go about doing this, our attorney, to get some legal advice. Um, there are different ways that people have done this in the past, whether it was through a federal, if it was through the federal government, and it's through the federal for immigration. It's, it's um, a totally different process, which we had actually entertained five years ago when I first got here. 
Um, that's an expensive process, it's a very laborious process, um, and that takes about a year, year and a half to actually get approval for that. Um, and we did go through that initially. Uh, however, by doing, by asking and requesting that um, this individual actually has on the visa stating that he's allowed to attend public education for one year, we don't have to go through that process. So I, I would recommend if you're okay with doing this and the suggestion that Diane and I um, have, I would state, um, I move to accept, and his name is Zion Yang, um, as a ninth grade student at Tahanto for the FY18 school year, provided he has the appropriate visa allowing him to attend a public school for one year with a tuition cost of $15,000. That would be my explanation. And he's taking the school choice spot for ninth grade? Well, was... So it's not so much that he's taking a school choice spot for ninth grade. We have. Um, we have allowed school choice in ninth grade, however, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why we felt that that size, that grade was, um, would allow the access. And we wanted to see his um, credentials first to see if it's something that we felt he would qualify for. Um, and we do. And there's no concerns around additional school choice requests for ninth grade? Numbers yeah. wise, no. Yeah. Ed, did you have a question? Yeah, you said he was not an exchange student. That's right. He'd be a, just a guest of the school. That's correct. Okay. A tuition in student. Okay. Yep. And just wondering what, again, because I'm not familiar with us having done this and what the process is, but what sort of the legality, the, the, the guarantees, is there any sort of pays a tuition, how is that sort of, is there a contract that they sign in right. order to allow, because you know, halfway through something happens, is there a, a bailout or something that they're allowed yep. to? So we would put together a contract with the attorney, exactly just as you said, and um, they would have to sign that contract. Um, Code of conduct, I'm not sure there's a lot. Right, and, and he has to sign the student handbook, just like every other student, but this okay. is the expectation, and the expectation of our school, the behavior of our school, it's the same, same policy, same discipline, same consequence. It's in America, and he has to go by our rules. Is there any previous experience, history of these type, or is this, is this the first time? So here at Tahanta, we've had exchange students. Many exchange students. Many exchange students. Usually one, not, one to two a year. Usually one to two a year. Um, right, and, but so not so much under this type of visa. Um, but this is the new requirements of immigration. So it's going to be like an exchange student, but just the legalities of it, we're not wording it. Okay. Right. Yep. Right. Tuition in. Cool. Mm -hmm. So I just want to go back to kind of the talk about the um, slots we opened up for choice. And someone had mentioned that students were returning back to our school. So I, used, I know it's only one additional student, but I want to confirm that you don't feel like the ninth grade class is going to be too big. Now the students that are returning back are sophomores or juniors who have gone to, chosen to, gone, to go to another school their freshman year and now are coming back. Okay, and the numbers you projected that were leaving our district and not going into ninth grade next year are accurate. Pretty accurate, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and just to let you know why we said no to the seventh and eighth grade the next year is we have well over 90 students in each of those grades. So at the eighth grade, we are anticipating 80 or less at this point. Correct. So we're comfortable with that. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone have any further questions? Um, should I reread the motion? Sure. Well, that means I'm making the motion. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I move to accept. Jian Jiang, I apologize in advance for mispronouncing, as a ninth grade student at Tahanto for the FY18 school year, provided he has appropriate, the appropriate visa, allowing him to attend public school for one year with a tuition cost of $15,000. I'll second. Ed second. Okay. Is that second. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Great. Thank you.
So once again, we've received the student handbook for Tahanto. It's a first read. Um, does anyone want to make any comments on it or ask questions? Okay, we'll be voting on that in June. Next up is the regionalization subcommittee update and Lori, I believe you are the presenter. I'm or the allowed, reporter. I'm allowed to speak now. <laughs> <laughs> You've been squirming on that. What? You've been squirming. <laughs> no, no. I've been trying to fulfill my appropriate role in support of Archie. Um, it's a pleasure to report on the um, exploratory process around regionalization. We have presented a charter to the school committee. The school committee approved the charter. We actually made some minor um, edits to that. We have shared that along with letters to town boards of selectmen, finance committees, and planning boards in closing the charter and seeking members to become part of a, an exploratory committee. We attended our first select board meeting on Monday night in, in Boylston. It was, I think, extremely helpful. It was a very positive conversation. There were some questions asked that were really helpful. There were some observations about how we talk about what we're thinking and making sure that we really keep a focus on uh, student achievement and educational purposes in these efforts um, and, and making sure that we're not over uh, expressing concerns relative to some of the administrative inefficiencies and um, financial implications. It actually was really helpful conversation and it is sort of shaping some of our ongoing communications. The next step in this process is we have a letter which um, the school committee has received in your packets that would be going out to parents. Um, thank you to Angela and to Karen and to Bob for offering edits and suggestions, very helpful. Um, the goal would be to send those and charters home as soon as we can. Um, and that the purpose of those letters is to recruit parents who might be interested in serving on this exploratory committee. We're looking for two sets of parents from each community. In June, uh, Matt, myself, and Angela will be meeting with uh, faculty during June staff meetings, explaining the process, soliciting feedback, and also inviting members of, of the uh, faculty to join this exploratory committee as well. The first meeting of this group is June 8th at 7.30 here at Tahanto. The tentative plan is that the committee would meet monthly on a schedule to be determined at that meeting. Um, we're hoping to hold at least one listening session in each community in June if possible. I realize that it's tight but um, that would be our goal. So, um, I think that's all I have, unless others have comments. I agree with it was a real positive response. I think it was surprising. I think we've approached this with one, this is part of the learning and hearing and listening, is that we approached this, I think, from looking at the inefficiencies and looking at the cost savings, and we were concerned approaching the subject that it was going to, those were the things we needed to build off of. And it became very clear and apparent that it's educational achievement, which we've provided here at Tahanto and accelerated, that's what matters. And it was kind of, it was a reminder of why we're doing this. And I think we all wanted to make that foundation, but we were also concerned about the other pieces and um, it was really refreshing. I do have a question and I don't know if we're allowed with the documentation, is it, I remember when we did the to building committee was ongoing, there was a public place to put documentation as it pertains to invitations, letters, the charter itself. Would we ever place that on a site? Would we put it on the website for In the Google Drive. And like, oh, you mean for an oh, oh, for the public? For the public. Oh, public. Oh, public. Sure. Yeah, I can go on the school. 
maybe, uh, we just don't know. It's probably worthwhile. So we, yeah. even in a general conversation, we can direct folks. It's a great idea. Yeah. We need to. I think as we develop the um, the committee, the regionalization committee, it would be good to actually um, identify somebody on that committee that would be responsible to put that stuff onto the site, onto the website. I think that's what they did with the building committee. It was yeah. one person, I think, that was responsible. Paul, do you remember that at all? Not to put you on the spot. But it was one person on the building committee, I think, that was responsible for to that particular page. Yeah. yeah. So that's what okay. I think we would state when you get the whole crowd of people. Okay. Identify somebody and then that person can have the access to the website to put it on there. We could even do a we could even do a tab that's just for regionalization committee, just like you had building committee yeah. as a tab. You could do the same thing. Regionalization committee so everybody would know that that would be the spot on the website to grab. That's, that's a great idea. idea. So people know right. The timeline, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah, it would be important. It you does know? remind me that our, I think our school committee tab is just empty right now. So we probably could address that at the same time. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. load some info on there as well. Yeah. Can I add something real quick? Sure. As a new member, just sitting in and attending a couple of discussions, including the proposal to the selectmen um, last night, obviously, wording and delivery are going to be extremely sensitive and important during this this process and i think one of the things that should be really heightened sensitivity wise with the committee when we involve the, the public and the other folks and especially certain selectmen had a lot of feedback around that particular topic i would think we should push that particular selectman to be the one to volunteer to join Right. If you, if you have that amount of feedback, I think we should encourage him to be the one who joins us. Right. Um, so I think <clears throat> to their suggestion as well, reaching out to other schools, region systems that have gone through this. I mean, I think that's an area we really should get some advice on. Is mm -hmm. is is wording and delivery? I don't even know. I think it's so much wording as it is. You guys are delivering the right agenda. I I knew it, but obviously. We're presenting to so many different folks, and you have to get this passed and through so many different folks to get something like this move along. What everyone hears is totally different, right? So I think as a group, we need to come together in a great way to be able to deliver something so everybody hears the same message. And I think that's what Mike Bay was talking about. Um, so we should challenge him to be our sounding board, right? So as we deliver this, I think we should push back a little bit and challenge him, right? Because he's gonna be an advocate for us in the community and, and someone who's gonna have that feedback. So it's just what I've observed in the two discussions that I've been involved in is that's gonna be one of our, one of your, our, I don't know, the correct term to use is gonna be, right? So that's just my observation. So yeah, I think that feedback was extremely helpful because I think we thought we were delivering that as part of our message and it's a, it was not a point of emphasis in his mind. So it was helpful. And even I went back and did some work on the parent letter again, too, keeping that in mind. Also adding in the fact that somebody made the point that we're already doing this so well at the middle high school level. You know, the students are benefiting from a strong regional system and great collaboration between the two communities. And we really should highlight that, that we're looking to expand that so that all students benefit um, in the way that the middle high school students have. So, you know, to, to what Angela was pushing in this first discussion, I, the mantra that we're taking the stance that we're doing this as a joint community and there's no percentages of who does what and more, whether it's financially, educationally, whatever, the fact that we're going into it in a very unified, even front, I think is something that we should focus on, right? It's something that I think community-wise, people are gonna read into that. Based on that logic, we're really mostly interested in the success of the kids and the education being the last piece of it, right? So I think that's something that we should, it's something that didn't come up in the select in the selectman discussion. We didn't, that didn't come up, but I think if it's, it's something that we could lean on to be part of that. Yeah. Did it kind of, I'm, yeah, I think if I missed it, I'm trying to mention yeah. that, because we think that's one of the reasons the timing is good for this, one of a number of reasons. 
is the fact that this school committee has come together <coughs> in an amazing way. And I think we mentioned it. I but apologize. I agree with I, you. If no, I missed that's it, I apologize. Right. I You're absolutely right that it's. I couldn't actually hear a lot of it that was going on up there. So. <laughs> I know somebody that was sitting behind said they didn't hear any of it. Well, I had to lean in to a lot of it. But. Ed, you, you have been waiting patiently to make a comment. Yeah, I uh, just came kind of in on the back end of this issue. <laughs> I've been uh, hearing about it, though, from uh, members of the planning board mm -hmm. and other members of my community who are sort of against regionalization, as I understand it, because they're concerned of the different budgets and the different mm -hmm. uh, school districts and uh, I just want to say that some of the people that I'm representing have some uh, doubts. I would like to work on this issue with people. I'd like to consult with you back and forth and find out some more about it so I can take something back to them. Because uh, one of the people in the, on my, on the Berlin uh, financial board believes that, that some of these things can be uh, gone about another way. So I just wanted to um, tell you that there are members in Berlin talked about that seem to feel that a number of panel, panels, the financial board, that some of the selectmen might be against this. I, I just want to sort of be involved in this so I can kind of bring back uh, information as well as forward information to you. Sure. And I think it's safe to say that we know that there are community members in both communities, boils and alike, that first blush is that there's this caution, there's concern, there's questions. And I think we, we know we are entering this willingly with that expectation, knowing that it's not going to satisfy everybody. Uh, we're knowing that you're not going to get 100% approval. It would be wonderful. And we, we always get surprised by how supportive both communities end up being. When we think there's doubt, when we think there's concern, once we are able to, in a positive fashion, articulate what we're trying to do, what the ultimate outcome and benefit is for all parties, specifically the kids, that we find that everyone sort of embraces and comes around. But uh, yeah, there is, we know that there's going to be some. Okay. Some points in this process that we have to, you know, we have to. Risk. That's why we're going to hold listening sessions. That's why we're going to make this a public discussion. Okay. It has to be. Okay. That's right. And that you know that's part of our our mission. Not only the mid, um, listening sessions that will occur relatively soon is to get that initial reservation, initial concerns. That's part of the committee's job to look at those concerns, explore them see if they're legitimate concerns and can they be rectified at all. That's part of the task of the regional subcommittee, I mean this regional relations subcommittee, committee rather. And the other thing too is we want all sorts of voices on the committee. It's a very large committee, but we don't want the committee to be all made up of, yay, let's do this. We want to hear um, all perspectives throughout the whole process and in, particularly in the beginning the better. That's kind of our purpose is to really kind of flush out and give people a chance to tell us what their concerns and reservations are if they have some and also their feedback and support too. That's because ultimately this does come down to the town. So we, this is our sense of we need to know the town in general and specifically. I would encourage those folks to participate, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I would do. I would to to some of the folks that select me to you. That's where you encourage those folks to participate, right? To your point, those are the folks you want to be part of that discussion. Mm -hmm. the, the only little tidbit that I would add, and I'm not even sure it's profound at all, but in my conversations with um, the people I encounter in Berlin, um, it would appear that there's a lot of education to go on, even about what regionalization is. I, mean, I find it a little surprising, given that we have a regional middle high school. And there are people who actually say to me, I don't even know what that means. Um, and so there is a, I think there's an education piece um, that, that's really important to put out there. 
So. It's interesting yeah. you say that because one of Angela's set of edits on the parent letter was to really lay out in very clear terms what the current structure is. Yeah. Because we really think some people don't necessarily understand how it currently is structured and how it works. So. Yeah. And some people too are looking at it just from a finance point of view. Yeah. I mean, the thing is too that I want to get their voices out there. Um, and I'll encourage those people to come and hear that that meeting is what next week or the week after that. The first meet the listening session hasn't been scheduled okay. yet. The first meeting of the committee <coughs> is June eighth. But the goal would be later that month okay. to have a listening session in Berlin. Okay. Um, and I would echo what people have been saying here. We're really interested in yeah. hearing yes. from people who have concerns, as well as people who maybe have questions, don't understand it, or people who are supportive. Yeah. Um, we recognize that this is a process. I think the other thing to point out is we've been embarked on this conversation for three years. Yeah. And we've had a couple of feasibility studies, and we've moved very slowly and very cautiously because I don't think we felt that there's, there was clear information, evidence, or defin uh, we were at a definitive point that this is what we need to do. Mm -hmm. I think where we are today is realizing we want to invite the communities to be a part of this process mm -hmm. in determining is this the best course of action. Sure. Right. That's the yeah. other thing I forgot to add. With, with this subcommittee, after we do some oh, yes. really delve in, it's really Just email me. <laughs> this committee yeah. will determine if they want to go forward or not. Thank you. Okay. Mary, I, I'd like to compliment the committee. I, your work has been um, prodigious, and you've done a great job with it. So, yeah, you've done a lot. You've done a lot, and I want to congratulate you on that. And you represent the school district well. I want to congratulate you on that. Thank you. Lori, apparently they did a great job last night. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure they did. I have no doubt in this. The, I have complete faith in the three of them. Lori, you're up again. Are you sick of me yet? <laughs> Never. I have the great task of sharing information about the evaluation of the superintendent. Paul is, oh, you're so good, Paul. Sometimes. I'll be your clicker. Oh, you will? Okay. Great. <laughs> you have to make the noise. Okay, sure. Yeah. I'm going to get it. I'm going to bring in my dog clicker. <laughs> So to begin with, every year, an important role of the school committee is to conduct an evaluation of the superintendent. Um, this year, we received five responses from the committee of six, and it's really a pleasure for me to share these results with you. Click. <laughs> the first thing I want to, um, that actually says summary. It's not all showing for some reason. Um, that, like, I'm not that tall. I oh. was struck as I was uh, compiling these results and looking at the summaries. I was struck by the fact that, and, and so it motivated me to actually count every single response from five people. There were 155 responses from the five people, so it's a fairly significant kind of document. Of those 155 responses, 78% were exemplary. That's just extraordinary to me. Um, tw oh, can you Sorry. go back? I didn't say click. <laughs> <laughs> and 22% were proficient. Now, proficient is sort of good, you know? It's like, hey, you met it, you know, you're doing good. So, and nothing was below proficient. So click. Um, there's a section that talks about progress towards goals, and those goals are, are categorized in three areas. In the area of professional practice, all five of the respondents indicated that Nadine had exceeded their goal. 
in student learning, three said she had exceeded, two said she met the goal. Again, no response lower than meet the goal or was proficient in any question. And district improvement, three exceed, two met. Exceeded, two mm. met. Forgive my grammar there. I'm so sorry. That was an inconsistency. You lost the parallel. <laughs> <laughs> Key strengths. Um, commitment to high standards, data-informed decision-making, communication, addressing family concerns, and fiscal systems and budgeting, which is a really cool one because a few years ago, it actually was an area that we recommended was not a strength, and tremendous efforts have gone into that, as well as she now has Bob, too. So that helps, too, right? Um, an area that might be worthy of more focus is social and emotional learning. And that comment is really maybe just a reflection of not having enough information on, there was reference to the areas below and then I didn't see anything below. <laughs> so we, I felt like maybe we didn't have enough information to judge this well. It also is an area that every school system struggles with. How do you best support the social and emotional learning needs of the students? Um, so that's an area for the future. Click. I want to share some of the comments. These are verbatim comments from five school committee members. The first one is the superintendent is an outstanding leader and the perfect person to have in place in the Berlin Boylston district at this time. She's forward thinking, relentlessly driven to improve, and devoted to continuous learning and caring and compassionate. Ms. Ekstrom is an exemplary superintendent. As she contemplates her fifth year with the Berlin Boylston Public Schools, our districts have benefited from her constant pursuit of excellence and steadfast nature. The districts have thrived from having longevity with a dedicated leader and a committed administrative team. Standardized test scores have improved and the percentage of local students who attend our public schools is increasing. Click. Click. <laughs> Nadine continues to grow as an asset to our school districts and to the towns of Berlin and Boylston, and her influence continues to drive outstanding educational opportunities for our students. Our schools are in a very, very different place than they were at the start of her tenure with us, greatly benefiting everyone in the school community. The superintendent is most effective in improving student learning when she both inspires and challenges teachers and administrators to be better. This is a delicate balance, inspire and challenge. And not everyone is interested in or willing to be inspired or challenged, especially in a system that for reasons I don't quite understand, leans toward being smug about student achievement. Kind of an interesting comment. There's there's a bit going on there, um, but it is a, a delicate balance, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Click, click. He did. I did. did. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Nadine, you have established high standards and a methodology for measuring progress. The benefits of assessment tools come through when you and your team are making decisions related to student learning and related areas of focus. This was very apparent in the presentation to school committee on student growth, comparative measures, and the discussion on future plans. It's good to see these as fact-based discussions supported by data. Nadine continues to improve the annual budget process, emphasizing early and consistent communication with municipal representatives to achieve the best possible support for the school district's needs. Considering the difficulty of maintaining educational programs and quality in an ever-tightening fiscal environment, this is a substantial feat. Click. Family and community engagement continues to be one of Nadine's strengths, ensuring excellent communication with the school committee and maintaining an encouraging, welcoming open-door policy. Her involvement to assist in issue resolution is impressive demonstrating an extraordinary level of personal attention 
that is appreciated in difficult situations and helps us to maintain a desirable small town feel. That's so cool. <laughs> Overall, summative performance. This is kind of a summary that it rolls up to on the document. And the overall rating of five school committee members was exemplary. And her impact on student learning and the choices were low, medium, high. Her impact on student learning is high. So kudos and congrats on a really strong evaluation and an excellent performance. I also want to say congratulations to the leadership team. Um, we know that Nadine doesn't do any of this alone, and, and you guys deserve tremendous credit for the work that's happening in the schools. I also want to thank the faculty who live the vision every day and um, who are always demonstrating how much they care about the students as well. It's an honor and a privilege for us to work with you and with your leadership team. So thank you. Wow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, if I could, you may. It's, it's it's always hard to hear things good or bad. It's it's just always just um, humbling. I think I'm speechless a little bit. I know I even though I was able to read some of this ahead of time, it's still that's about me. Um, I just I really just want to say first of all thank you to the school committee because it really takes a good solid school committee to work together that makes us really um, enjoy getting up every day and getting to our jobs that are not easy and I say us as a, as a team because I do always try to talk about the success that you see at the school it's because of, of the team effort um, never with I and um, but I do want to say that I have an awesome team and that starts at the school committee to the administration our teachers are just been great. Um, they're wonderful to work with. I uh, can't do it without this guy right here next to me too, so we're great to have him as an add-on um, with my financial, fiscal. He's, he made me look good this year. Um, but anyway, I think everybody really puts a lot of effort into the school. I know for myself personally, um, I think of everybody's children and I say there are, ch there are children, um, whether they're school choice or they're residents. And every one of them are very important uh, to me personally, um, as well as professionally. So um, I see, I, I get excited every day that I can go into a classroom and I can see the children learning um, every day that I can go in. And you see that, in, and you all know what I'm talking about, that aha moment when it clicks. I just see one of those and that makes my day. Um, I love to start my weeks on Mondays going into schools because that's what we're here for and that's what grounds me for the rest of the week. Um, so I take pride in the school system. I take pride in announcing that the school committee that I have um, and my administration. Sometimes we've gone and just recently even um, Carol uh, and I were just talking about how we've gone to some um, trainings or whatever recently and they refer to Berlin and Boyles and we're really humbled by that because it's it's great to hear that we've been seen as examples in the state for various reasons. Um, but I, I, you know, I've been able to take my time this year as well to just look at and assess myself personally and professionally and to actually, I've actually said, wow, I've been here for five years and look at where we've come. And I, and I say we, look where we've come, but I've also seen my own growth and a couple of times just recently with some of my admin team, I've talked about how I've seen myself change as an administrator for the positive, and it's, it's the changes that are made through the feedback and the reflections that I also get back. To me, um, I, I value those, and I value everybody. So I look forward to continuing my tenure here, um, and I'm excited about the potential and the changes that we have coming forward. And I'm glad that what you recognized is what we as a team have already recognized in regards to the social-emotional learning. In fact, um, John, Ace, Carol, and myself we went to an elementary school um, today to look at their social, emotional, um, their curriculum that they use. And we brought some teachers with us as well from each school uh, to look at that social, emotional uh, program and curriculum. We have a virtual, which will be kind of cool, 
Paul's going to set up for us in our room tomorrow, hopefully, if everything goes well, right? Um, we have a virtual tour of another school with a different program. Carol and I spoke this afternoon about the middle and high school and how we can incorporate that program. So that is our main focus for next year. We've got a couple of um, focus for next year. Social emotional learning is definitely our top. Um, civics, how we can authentically bring civics into our classrooms um, and, and um, civic learning and, and experiences authentically and listening to the school today um, that we've been visited, they actually use the social curriculum that focus on empathy and they gear it towards physics. So I can see how we can tie those together. It was very cool to see that today. Um, and then also inclusive, inclusive schools. And what does inclusive schools mean? And not just special education inclusive schools, but community-based inclusive schools and how we can continue to build our community partnerships in a variety of settings, whether it's with other schools, small businesses, um, colleges, universities, and how we can continue to build that. So I think that all ties in. If we can build a community um, and continue to support each other, then our social emotional issues also start to decrease. So. So I, I thank you and I commend you for all of your work that you also have done and you have a big road ahead of you uh, in regards to this regionalization and I'm, I'm looking forward to being a part of those discussions and seeing where those concerns are coming from and, and so forth. So thank you very thank much. You. Thank, you. thank you. And thank you, Lori, for doing an outstanding job in uh, pulling that all together and doing a slide presentation. Woo -hoo. I mean, you really set the bar high. I, I think I'm going to give up my chairmanship. <laughs> Don't do that, Cliff. Uh, the next item on our agenda is a um, point in the program where we reaffirm our norms and standards as a school committee. Uh, they want to listen to the evaluation. Very supportive. Uh, I was going to ask them, is this the same person you see at home? Yeah. <laughs> you could think you didn't ask them. <laughs> they ran quickly. Yeah, they ran quickly. <laughs> I'm they don't, they don't see you all. Yeah, I, I, sure. I can't find it in my so, pile of stuff. Policy um, BDA um, is actually the school committee norms and standards. And each year and day, um, you um, you, review, you review them, but you also sign to an agreement that you're going to abide by yes. this policy. So this actually would be um, signed by, it's not a vote, it's just a fact that you're just reaffirming. Um, and I believe it should be in that um, packet that I sent around. It and is. Basically stating that you're going to um, agree to abide by that policy, which is, um, includes your norms and standards. That's what that is. Okay, that's great. <clears throat> Anyone have any questions about that before you see it and sign it? The only, uh, just a comment. The last one to sign it. Oh, I'm the last one to sign it. Okay. There's also something for you to initial in here as well. Thank you, Angela. Just a comment on that as I reread those norms and standards. It really brought me back. A few years before we, you know, when we first started the district governance project, and I really think that some of those standards today, we probably want to modify that this summer um, because some of it just seems, um, I, don't, I don't want to say unnecessary, but some of them I think were coming from a place of concern that. Are people going to work together? Are people going to represent the committee in a positive way? And I, I think that this group has really proven itself in, in that way. So we might want to modify so some. That, that actually brings up a good piece, and I know your governance um, project workshop dates um, is a little bit later in the agenda, but that's how these came out right. through that policy workshop. So, I mean, through the governance workshops, so you might bring these forward again at that time and have those open discussions in a workshop with Dora and yeah. Pressing. That's good. Okay. Are we set to move on to dates? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did anyone, just, I don't quite know what to do with this other than to say, <laughs> do we want to vote on it? Do we want to talk about it? What is it we want to do with this? 
So just for the new people, if I could, um, if Please. for the new people um, that are on the um, school committee, we always have um, one meeting a month as a minimum. And then you'll see on the region, the region of their stars, because those are on, um, those are an additional meeting, a second meeting of the month if needed. On those second meetings of the month, we would not be asking any of the administrative team to have to be present typically, um, except it might just be me and Bob because it would be more or less business items and so forth. But the other members, I would not be asking them to all be here for that. It's just for the region. Um, and so we haven't really had to use those this year. Those are a, an as needed. Um, also, the 7 o'clock time slot, we have started school committees, I believe, as early as 6, obviously. Um, we started them as late as 7.15, 7.30, I think, last year, and that was actually because of my schedule, because I had courses on those Tuesday evenings, and that I wouldn't be able to get here any earlier than that, but we wanted to stay true to the Tuesday. I think it's important for school committee to remember that when your day is set, we ask PTOs and CPAC and everybody else to not have meetings on those days, so they actually have shifted their dates to other days during the week, knowing the school committee typically meets on a Tuesday. So, um, you know, in regards to the schedule and the time, I guess you'd want to just ask each other if you want to um, keep the time at 7. Last year we had tried to go a little bit earlier, but Larry was on the board and, and you couldn't go earlier than 7. Um, the December one is the, the December 19th. That actually was moved to the 19th because the week before that is um, a Jewish holiday, so we're trying to be um, respectful of the holiday. So we moved it to December 19th. Otherwise, they're typically the, the um, you know, beginning. Is that calendar on the drive? It's yes, it is. is it, yep. What is it named? Does anybody know what it's it called? Yeah, the anticipated 2017. It's to the end of the packet. Dash 2018. <laughs> okay. So the proposal is to meet on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock. Got it. Got it. Ready? Yep. I'm curious if people would be able to or be interested in meeting earlier. I'm available earlier. I'm available earlier. I am too. I actually showed up at 6 o'clock today. <laughs> 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 Oh, I'm just so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I ate no dinner and I flew down here and then I turned around and went home and did it again. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> I think it might be good if Matt can do it all because, I, because the admin team was here all day. It makes yeah. it easier for them. But also, hopefully, late enough that our presenters who have to wait for the other spouse to get home from work can make it too. I know we could always accommodate them at a different point in the agenda, but I don't know, six series pushing it. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I was laughing to say what I'm going to be doing on September 12th. Six o'clock sounds fine to me. I don't know. <laughs> okay, do we have a consensus then around 6.30? Seems we do. Okay. All right. So do we have to have a formal vote to approve this? No. no. I just have to mention that I will not be able to attend the first meeting. <laughs> You're already blown. Where are you going to be? Uh, August 29th, I'll be in Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. I'll be somewhere next week. Yeah, well. Okay. That's exciting. Wait, so, so who's the vice chair? Okay. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is the MASC self-evaluation, and Angela would like to explain. This is something that we do typically every year. I didn't ask for them to be collected. I never turned one in myself, so... Yeah, I think this was my failure, frankly. One of many, but... Um, Matt was kind enough to forward the document to us, I think, during a meeting. Yes. And then I never followed up to ask people to submit them. So one of my thoughts is if we could do them before our district governance process, 
that would be helpful to have that information. Um, I can send it again from. Please do. Yeah. Send it back. Could we set it? Yeah. Could we set a deadline though, of like the, by the next meeting? I mean, give us a month to do it. I mean, it only takes a few minutes, truly. So if we could set that, have them in hand by the next meeting. Yeah. I'm always better with a firm date than a date. It's my personal learning style. Okay, so the MASC District Governance Support Project workshop dates. Can That's I a mouthful. Sorry, can I just confirm we're going to send them to you, right? Like yes, you're going to send them to me. And those are located? Um, who's going to send them? They're going to get sent out. I don't know where the link drive. is. The link the one is, it is on the shared drive. It oh, it's on the shared drive? It's on the shared drive. It's on the shared drive. Thank you, Matt. Is it in its own place, or is yeah. it? It's actually under the May 23rd meeting under okay. XV11-4-C. Okay. <laughs> cool. Committee self-evaluation. So, so just download that. Oh, there download it is, right it. on my face. So yeah, right there. It. Right there. self-evaluation. <laughs> There it is. Okay. Do Great. Do we expect our new members? I don't think they have to evaluate them no. yet. No, 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 they haven't been on a committee. Uh, <laughs> you have certain, I would read Sorry, it. You have certain comments about a school so, role. Or I love the time for myself. Where this actually, when we originally started doing this, actually, when we had the governance project last time, and Dorothy Presser had asked that prior to the first workshop that you actually did this, and she she put them all together as a summary. So it's typically a practice, so it'd probably be good to do this right before the workshop so that we can give that to her. Well, we'll have it by the next meeting because yeah. I'm going to send them to me by then. Okay. Okay, that's great. So now we're going to talk about the uh, governance support project. Um, I don't mind saying something about this. Yeah, uh, when we were, um, as a, believe it or not, I'm a relatively new school committee member, as it, as it turns out. And I kept hearing about the governance project, the governance project, because Lori was always referred to it, Andrew referred to it, people might like, what? That's the governance project. Wow, we were obnoxious back then. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounded like important. Um, uh, important work, but I didn't know anything about it. So actually, when we were at the Dan Hill, mm -hmm. um, Nadine and I were talking about the governance project. I was making my pitch that I thought it'd be good to do it again because we have so many new committee members. Um, I believe Matt probably didn't participate in the governance project either, right? Because you came after me. Not that far out. Yes, okay. Days. Days, moments, <laughs> hours. Um, and Dorothy Presser happened to be standing there. So, maybe you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, well, Dorothy Presser was actually had just talked to us, and, and um, she had said, oh, I, I got your inf you know, the information that you were interested in doing the, the um, governance project again. She's very interested. She's available pretty much any evening in July and August, except for July 18th and 19th. She can do Saturday workshops if you're thinking of doing a Saturday workshop instead. Um, the only time she would be available is July 29th. Other than that, pretty much she's pretty open to it. Um, we did, they were usually, um, we stayed true to two hours. So the workshops would be, you know, we did it seven to nine or six to eight or five to seven, whatever, uh, for two hours. Um, you started with your self-assessment and where you, where you wanted to go, where you saw things were concerning or, or what you hope to achieve out of the governance project. Um, and I think there's a lot that's, that's changed here as a school community um, that it would be good to just, even to just get some refreshers of roles of superintendent versus school committee and where do those lines cross and, and where do they, should they not cross in, in regards to from every form. Um, and I think that's what really helped. I know it helped me even when I was working at Gil Montague as the superintendent out there, we did the governance project and it really helped because a lot of ed reform, they never kind of got the message in some cases about where those roles um, started and ended. And I think it helped to give them some structure as a beginning for them to be able to do some of the turning around that they needed. And here when we did it the first time, we didn't even have 
I came in and there was no mission statement. There were no goals. There was there was no direction to go by. So I kind of had to pull from somewhere to, to get something um, moving forward. Everybody, each school was working in their own direction and everything. So um, the committees were working as separate entities, you know, rather than trying to work together. So. Um, you know, that's that's pretty much where it is. So, you know, there's a lot of flexibility in the governance project of what you hope to accomplish and what you hope to do. And I think probably just starting with an opening of your self-assessment and, um, you know, maybe even redefining or identifying those roles of responsibility um, might be a good way to start. And then you can move from there. Absolutely. My suggestion. So I think what we'd have to do is get some ideas of dates so that we can give back to Dorothy. Um, so I don't know if everybody wants to look at their calendars now of availability and pick, you know, maybe give two or three dates. Um, maybe it would be good to do a Tuesday evening since we do Tuesdays anyways. Yes. Tuesday, June 13th. Oh no. oh no! No, no, no. Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we can't. We're doing something else. Although I'm hoping we're all done. Well, the hope springs each other. Well, so you <laughs> have a you have a tentative regional school committee meeting June twentieth. You could since that's already in your calendar, you could probably propose that one. Ah, uh, yeah. Why not? Yeah, yeah. that's always good. So, yeah. How many dates do we need? I think if you give her three options, she'll pick one to start. Okay. But her message almost sounded like she was wide open other than... That was back in May 10th, so that was, okay. you know, almost two weeks ago, so I don't know where she is at this point. Well, we're going to get into people's vacations, I'm sure, um, July in July. 11th. How about July 11th? See if it's easily. What's wrong? 7 p.m. We're talking, please. Yep. Tuesday, July 25th. Um, I will be away. Tuesday, August 1st. It's okay by me. I will be away. I'll be away. Okay. okay. Um, About the, let's go through the Tuesdays. August 8th. August 8th. That's okay. No? Yeah, that's fine. It's a long day for me, but that's fine. Yep. So we've given her three dates, June 20th, July 11th, and August 8th. All right, I'll send them. I'll have Cheryl send those to Dorothy. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Just have the 8th be like a last choice. Yeah. yeah. So we have our administrative retreat on 8th, 9th, and 10th, so... By the time the end of the day, we're all kind of looking at each other a little cross-eyed. Can <laughs> cancel classes in the afternoon? No. Can jam? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Ice cream. I'll can jam. No. If, if you're all feeling that way. You mentioned where? Maybe the word retreat's not the right word. <laughs> 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 Let's not ask them when not <laughs> August 1st. <first. August laughs> I'll right. pull them later for a new word for But that's retreat. a third choice. <laughs> so well, we four, there's the three the different days. All right, so <laughs> um, school committee members, do we have any comments or any future agenda items? None of this. OK, group. hearing none. I'm sorry, can I ask this question? Oh, yes, sure. It's fifth grade recognition right now. Last one in the school year. The 20-something. Okay, thank you. Okay, the school website. So we have a need, we have a need for executive session. Yep. So what I need is um, we have two executive sessions this evening. Um, we have the Berlin Boylston Regional uh, Union 60 executive session, and then we also have the Berlin Memorial. Um, Berlin will reopen the region will not. Um, so what we need is one, two, 
motion? I would like the legal language read, please. For the Berlin Boylston Regional Union 60 School Committee, it's moved to go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining and not to reconvene in open session. So moved. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Is this a poll question? Okay, it's a roll call. All right, Matt? Aye. 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 And I hear. So. And we need the chair to declare that an executive session is necessary to protect the bargaining and litigation position of the body. Yes, I do declare that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I'll give you the language, Deb. You and me, we'll talk. All right. Okay. Um, and then for Berlin, we need the Berlin um, School Committee to move to one of executive session uh, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining and to reconvene in open session. I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Aye. Okay. Aye. I'd like to make a motion to close the Wilson School Committee. Second. Let's go with that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So thank you. I'm not we're not all for it. We're here for the, the regional. Oh. All right. We're done.